What's going on guys, John Alder here from CodeMe.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to start using databases for our apps with Kivi and Python. Alright guys, like I said in this video, we're going to start to look at databases, but before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to that channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodeMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code DG1 to get $30 off memberships, all my courses, videos, and books. One time fee is just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, like I said, in this video, we're gonna start to look at databases with Kivi. So you can see I've got a very basic app here. You enter a name, you can type something in. We can show the records that are already in the database. If we want to add a new one, we can type it in, submit it, Tina was added, we could show it again, and boom, there she is. So a very, very basic app, but this is just gonna get us started with databases, start to sort of start to show you how to use them and, and all the good stuff. So let's head back over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other Kivi videos in this video, over 50 so far. So check that out if you haven't seen it so far. So, okay, I've got two files here, first underscore db, first database, dot pi, and first underscore db dot kv, a little Kivi file. And these are just our basic Kivi starter code that we've been using. Now I'm gonna use Kivi MD for this video and we'll build on that later, but we're not gonna really be doing much KVMD stuff in this video. We're just gonna be focusing on the database. So, so you could use this in regular Kivi apps or Kivi MD apps, it really doesn't matter. So you can see we've got our basic Kivi starter code. I'm pointing this to first underscore db dot KV. So in this very first database video, I'm just gonna use the SQLite 3 database that comes with Python. It's a very lightweight database and it's probably not great for like production level, but it will show us how to start using this stuff. And then in future videos, I'll show you how to use better databases like MySQL, Postgres, whatever you guys want. Okay, so let's head over to our first underscore db dot kivi file. And let's just very quickly bang out a quick GUI here. So uh, let's see, at the top we want a label. And let's give this an ID of like, I don't know, word underscore label, very unique. And let's go text underscore size. And let's set this to self dot size. And then let's go h align. I don't know, just really quickly sort of bang this out. Let's put the center v align. Let's go like middle. I don't know what I'm doing here. It's Monday morning. And let's give this a text of let's say what enter a name something like that. And for good measure, let's go font underscore size and put this at 32. So okay, just a basic label. Let's now also go text input. And like I said, we're just doing basic stuff here. It's not a whole lot of MD type stuff. Let's give this an ID of word underscore input. Again, very unique. And let's go multi line, set that to false. And then let's give this a size underscore hint of like one and 0.5. Okay. And then finally, let's give this a button. We're probably going to want a couple of buttons here, but we'll just do one real quick and then copy and paste. So let's go size underscore hint. And this is going to be one comma 0.5. And then for the font size, let's also go 32. For the text, let's go submit name, something like that. And then on press, when we press this button, let's just call app.submit. And we'll make this function in a bit here. So, okay, we're also gonna probably want another button. So I'm just gonna copy this guy. Come over here, paste it in again. This one will be what? Show records, something like that. And for here, we want to call, I don't know, show underscore records. <laughs> All right. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this and run it just to make sure this is working. That's pointing at first DB. Head over to our Git Bash terminal. I'm in my C KVMD directory. I've got my virtual environment turned on. And let's go Python first underscore DB dot pi. And when we do, we get this basic GUI. It says enter a name. Uh, the buttons don't actually work because we haven't built them yet, but we've got a submit name button and a show records button, a little text input where we can type stuff. Okay, so good to go. So now let's head over here to our first underscore db.py file and to use SQLite, SQLite 3 technically is what it is, we just need to import it. Now SQLite comes with Python, there's nothing we have to install. We could just use it by calling import SQLite 3. Boom, that's all there is to it. Now with MySQL, it's a little bit more than that, but SQLite 3 comes with Python, we're gonna use that, so just that easy. So, okay, let's come down here, and first, let's kind of define some functions here. Remember, we have a submit function and a show records function, so let's go submit. We wanna pass in self, 
And for now, let's just do that. And we also want to call define show records. Uh, let me just copy this. We also want to pass in self and let's pass for now. Okay, so these are our two functions that those buttons are going to call. So the first thing we need to do is when the app starts, we need to create a database table if one doesn't exist already, because we want to save our information to a database. We have to create a database or table in a database uh, in order to use it. So I'm going to come into our main build function here. And above this, because this is going to load our Kivi file, and I want to create all this stuff before we load our Kivi file. So let's go uh, create database or connect to one. And to start out, I'm going to create a connection. I'm going to call it con short for connection. And this is going to be a SQLite three dot connect function. And now we just need to name our our database. So I'm going to call this first underscore DB dot DB. It's going to be a dot database file, right? I'm calling it first DB because this file is called first DB. You can call anything you want. Uh, it doesn't matter whatsoever. So that will so that will create our little connection. Now we need to create a cursor. So let's go create a cursor. And a cursor with a database is sort of like a little I think of it as a little robot, it goes off and it does stuff for you, right? So you tell it, hey, go look up something in the database, the cursor runs out and it does it, you want to add something to the database, you tell the cursor, it runs out, it adds it to the database. It's just how this works. So I'm going to create it, I'm going to call it C short for cursor. And that's going to be a con dot cursor instance. And that's just this con this connection We're saying, hey, connect to this thing, and then create a cursor. So now let's create a table. Tables are what holds your information in a database, right? So we're gonna go see, we're gonna use our cursor dot execute, right? And then several ways you could do this, I'm going to use triple quotation marks. So we want to create table, if not exists. So if it already exists, it's not going to create it again. But if it doesn't exist, it will create the table. What do we want to call this? I'm just going to call it customers. Let's pretend we have a bunch of customers. Now inside of here, we need to define the columns of our table. So we just want one column, and I'm gonna call it first name, or you could just call it name, I guess, right? And that name is going to be text, right? So I'm not going to talk a whole lot about database stuff, I'm going to assume you already understand basic database functionality. If you don't check my channel, I've got a ton of SQLite and other database videos. I've also got a bunch of stuff in Kinter. A lot of the stuff we're doing here is going to be very similar to how we connected to a database with Kinter. So go back and watch the Kinter videos for that. Or like I said, you could check my other SQLite database videos on YouTube. I've got an entire course on it at Codemy. So if you really need to brush up on the stuff, it's very easy. But if you don't know it, you should go learn it real quick at any of those places. So this will create this table, we've only got one column, if we had more than one column, we would slap a thing in there. And you know, we would go like last name, that would be text to whatever. We don't we've just got one, one column. So that's that. So once we've done those things, we need to commit our changes, sort of like save them, right? So let's go con dot commit. And then let's finally close our connection. And that's going to be con dot close. Okay, so when the app first starts, this will create the database if it doesn't already exist, it will create a table in the database. Uh, the database name is going to be first underscore DB, the table is going to be called customers, it will have a column called name, and we're good to go. So now we just need to add stuff to it or look up stuff in it. And that's what these two guys down here are. So let's now submit a name to the database, right? So I'm going to come up here and I'm just going to copy all of this stuff. Well, I'm going to actually copy all of this stuff. And let's come down here and I'm just going to paste it in. Now, right here is going to be slightly different. But when we connect to our database to add a name to it, we're still going to connect to it, we're going to still create a cursor. When we're done, we're going to commit those changes, and we're going to close our connection. The only difference is here, we want to add a record. Instead of creating a table, we're adding a record. So to do that, we're using our cursor C dot execute. Right. And lots of different ways you can do this, I'm just going to go insert into customers. That's the name of our table, right? If we come up here, remember, we called it customers right here, right? So we want to insert into customers, the values of something, right? So I'm here just going to go first. Now, this is sort of the syntax I would use if there was lots of things we were doing, and we're only doing one. So this is a little silly, but 
more than likely you would have more things in here. So first name, last name, age, email, phone number, whatever you wanted. Just for now, for this very basic app, we've just got one thing we're adding to the database. So we'll do it like this. So inside of here, we want now a comma. And then let's go brackets. Okay. And then inside of here, we need to sort of define what this thing is. So let's go first. And then what do we want to put in here? Well, we want to put in whatever's in the input box. What is the input box? That's self dot root dot IDS dot word underscore input dot text. Right? And then we can slap a comma in here. Now, where did I get this stuff? This word underscore input dot text. Remember our Kivi file here, the text input, we called it word input. So whatever the word input is, that's word input dot text from self dot root dot IDS, right? So, okay, that should do the trick there. And that's all there is to it. Now we might want to add a little message or something. So here we could go self dot root dot IDS dot word underscore label dot text equals, and it could be something why word underscore label because up here, remember, we've got this label so we can have it say anything we want. It starts out by saying enter a name. But after we add a name, we could say, you know, um, let's make this an F string. Let's say, uh, whatever this thing is. Added, right? So name added, right? Now, we also probably want to clear the input box, right? After we typed in a name and click the button, we want whatever we typed into the input box to disappear, right? So here we could go self dot root dot IDS dot word underscore input dot text and just set that equal to nothing. So, okay, that will submit a thing. Then we want to save our changes and close our connection. So, okay, that's that looks pretty good. Now, normally I like to save things and try them as we go, but here we kind of have to do it all at once or else none of it will work. So here in our show records function, we want to show the stuff that's in the database. So again, I'm going to come up here and just kind of copy all of this stuff again. Now, there are other ways to do this, and we'll look at cleaning up this code in future videos. In this video, I just want to show you this stuff. So again, when we want to show our records, we have to connect to the database. We have to create a cursor. Here, we don't want to create a table. We want to do something else. But when we're done, we want to commit those changes and close our connection. So what do we want to do here? We want to... Uh, grab records from database. So let's go c.execute, use our cursor again. And here we want to select everything from our customers table, right? Now we want to go records. Now let's take all that stuff and stick it in a variable that we can then do stuff with. So records equals c.fetchall. And this is a function. This will go out, fetch all of the stuff the star means everything. So we're saying, hey, fetch this stuff, which is everything from customers, and then put it in this variable records. So now we've got this variable records, we can do stuff with it. So what do we want to do? Well, I'm going to create a variable called word, set it equal to nothing. Now let's loop through these records and add it one at a time to this variable that we can then just output onto the screen, right? So let's go loop through records. So let's go for a record in a records. We want to take our word variable and let's do an F string here. And let's add whatever is in that variable. And then add a new line and then put a record in it. And this is not quite what we need to do. And you'll see what I mean in just a second. But uh, for now, that'll work. Now, finally, we need to output that to the screen. So let's go self dot root dot IDS dot word underscore label and set that equal. Let's do an F string just for fun and I'll put that as word. Okay, so I think that'll work. Let's go ahead and save this. We did a lot of stuff there. Hopefully no errors, but you know, it's Monday morning. So yep, yep. First DB is not defined. Let's see line 11 already. Wow. Come back here. Oh, this needs to be in quotation marks. Of course it does. Okay, that looks good. Since I copied and pasted this every time, I every time I did this, there we go. This needs to be in quotation marks. And for this one, two down here, probably. Yep, this one needs to be in quotation marks. It's Monday morning. 
All right, save this, run it. Now it should work. So show records, there's nothing to show. Let's type in John, click submit, John was added. Now if we show records, oh, nothing happened again. Let's add another one, Tim, submit, all kinds of errors this morning. And our show records, ah, dot text. Okay, that should work now. So now if we come back here, run this guy again, Let's try this one more time. So here, John, submit a name. John was added, we can show a record. Notice this looks a little weird. We'll fix that in a second. We get add Tim, submit, Tim was added. Okay, notice these, this is a tuple with one item in it. So we can change that if we head back over here and let's see where we're showing our records and we're outputting, we've created this word. We just want the zeroth item of the tuple. We could do it like that. Now, if we save this, head back over here, hit reload, bring this over, show records again, now it's normal. So we could type in Mary, submit, Mary was added, show the records, John, Tim, Mary. So very simple way to start using databases with Kibi. Now, obviously this is gonna get more complicated as we go along. Obviously this is pretty sloppy. We can clean this up going forward. In this video, I just wanted to show you sort of the basic concepts that you're gonna be using. So you just import your SQLite 3, create a connection, name your database. Now this is a relative path. This will save in the same directory wherever this file is located. So in our case, it's ckvmd slash first underscore db dot db. That's where that's located. You can put this anywhere you want by, you know, going c uh, uh, forward slash whatever. But, you know, we'll just do it like that. Uh, create a cursor, do your SQL command. Again, if you don't know SQL, learn SQL either SQLite or MySQL or whatever for your you know basic database commands like create table and insert into and select from. That's all SQL stuff, right? It's just, I'm gonna assume you already know that stuff. And then you just do your thing, commit your changes and close. So again, to submit, connect to our database, create a cursor, do the thing you wanna do. In this case, insert into our customer's table, commit your changes and close. Just that simple. Here we wanna look up stuff. We make a connection, create a cursor, do the thing you wanna do, commit your changes and close. So really, really simple. And it's just the way you do it with any Python file. It's not anything to do really with Kivi. This is just how you connect to a database with Python. And if you already know how to do that, you know how to do it with Kivi. Then you're just doing stuff like this where you're just you know doing whatever you wanna do with the data as it comes out. And it's just that easy. So that's all for this video. If you liked, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code usu one to get $30 off memberships. It pays $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learn to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.